Welcome back to Play Excite Studios, everyone. Ryan here. Today, it is my privilege, nay, my honor, to bring you a comparison of my personal Mesa Boogie Mark IV Rev B, this lovely Mesa Boogie Mark III Red Stripe clad in an ivory shell, and yes, even the king himself, the mighty Mark II C+. And none of this could have been possible without my friend Keith from The Gear Land. This is a channel that just recently started up and uh, they've got a lot of cool interviews and technical deep dives into amplifier circuitries. I'm even going to make a couple guest spots here and hopefully the near future with a really cool guitar and even a more in-depth look at the Mesa Boogie Mark II C+. So I'll definitely send you guys that way when those release. And uh, again, huge thanks for this. This is like a once in a lifetime opportunity times two to check out these kind of amplifiers. For those of you that are no talk in all action, I'll have the Timestamps linked below in the description so you can guide yourself through various portions of this shootout going from clean to extremely high gain sounds that these amplifiers have to offer. I will have recorded all these amps the exact same way so that the only variable in this equation really is the amplifier itself as a package. That means I didn't get super particular about swapping tubes or anything like that. They are as they are when they arrived to me, which I think is fair considering that's how a lot of people are gonna be testing amplifiers if you're directly comparing them. But I did record them with the exact same DI, reamped through my amp switch, going through the Sur reactive load, then into Cubase and using an impulse response to finish off the cap sound. And I understand there's a vocal group out there that for whatever reason does not like hearing impulse responses in YouTube videos, but I stand by my use of them for several reasons. Number one, I've proven several times in different shootouts that if you record them properly, and if you have tones that don't rely on a ton of speaker compression, which I fall in that category that my tones do not, you absolutely cannot tell the difference. It is literally impossible. By the time you add in you know, digital sampling and it's going through YouTube anyway. Number two, it eliminates any potential for variability to be introduced in the miking process. You know, There's a potential I couldn't catch a microphone slightly drooping throughout the course of this recording process and we might accidentally attribute a fizzier tone to an amplifier when in fact it was just a microphone that you know wasn't tightened down all the way. So we get rid of that. And I think most importantly, this allows me to recab these sounds after the fact to bring you tones of cabinets that I don't have in my collection, which I think is important for today's shootouts. The lower tuning demonstration towards the end of the video will use an overdrive up front to boost the amps. Besides that, all of these are gonna be dry demos, meaning no reverb on board or in the DAW, no pedals boosting it, nothing in the effects loop of the Mark III or Mark IV, but the Mark II C Plus will have the Mesa five band EQ in the loop because it's one of the models that shipped without the integrated five band graphic EQ that you see on board the three and the four. And even some of the Mark III models didn't ship with this EQ and it is integral to a lot of the high gain tone. So this is, I think the best substitute. I mean, a lot of ways, I think the pedal is better quality than what shipped on uh, some of these amplifiers, but that's uh, a discussion for another day. And I suppose that brings us to the point where we start evaluating the similarities and differences between all these amplifiers, but I'm sure that raises a pertinent question from some of you. Why no Mesa Mark I? Why no Mesa Mark V or the JP 2C? Uh, the short story is because I don't have them available to me. The long story short version is I don't think they would be very good candidates for this particular video, at least not the way that I'm shooting it anyway. Uh, the Mark I is hard enough to find in a head form, though you could certainly take the speaker out and uh, make it work for the way that I'm recording this, but it lacks the high gain capability that the later models do, especially the 2C+. And so it would really only be an interesting comparison on the clean crunch, you know, the hot rotted Fender Princeton tones that it honestly originated from to begin with. So it would be cool to check one out, certainly wouldn't be opposed to it, but from a metal standpoint, it's not really a metal amplifier. With the Mark V and the John Petrucci signatures, these are more compendiums of past Mesa Boogie Mark series tones, especially with the Mark V where the clean channel very much treads the same ground as rhythm one and rhythm two on these amplifiers. Uh, the second channel is a little more unique, has kind of a British spin on things that I don't think are as easily replicable on these amplifiers. So that would be cool to evaluate. But the high gain channel only really has one unique setting on the extreme mode. And again, as much as I would like to compare that across all the different amplifiers, the other modes are a Mark II C plus and a Mark IV mode anyway. Um, perhaps more frustrating is that they don't have the cascading drive control where you 
turn up volume into drive like you would on the Mark II, III, and IV, and you're limited to a single gain pot, and the drive control is essentially fixed in the circuit somewhere that the user can't access. So as much as I would like to evaluate those amplifiers at some point, I will have to do so in a bit of a different manner, I think, because this 10 or so years of Mesa Boogie Mark series history is where a lot of evolution happened, and uh, it's absolutely my favorite era of the Mark series sound. So for the amplifiers themselves then, you're gonna notice a lot of similarities. You're gonna notice a lot of differences on the surface that do not translate into differences tonally, and vice versa. You'll notice a lot of things that you would think should be the same across all these amplifiers, both visually and functionality-wise, and then they translate into different tones. So it's kind of a, an interesting grab bag and I very much feel like it is a direct evolution in terms of the 2C Plus to the Mark III Red Stripe to the 4 Rev B uh, with the tones that are on tap and kind of the capabilities of all the channels. Now it is important to note that, you know, I'm using the 2C Plus without a graphic EQ, I'm using the Mark III Red Stripe and the Mark IV Revision B. As much as all these amplifiers share similarities with not only each other, but the different amplifiers within that family, there's gonna be differences. The Red Stripe Mark III in particular is the closest to the 2C Plus tonally and circuit-wise, but those things may not carry over 100% to the various other colored stripes like the green, black, purple, and so on. So with all that out of the way, you can't necessarily watch this video and then go buy a Mark IV Revision A or a you know 2B or what have you and expect to hear the exact same thing. So. This will be a good, I think, general overview, but we gotta get really nerdy and have to have a lot more amplifier samples to talk about the other stuff. I already mentioned the lack of the integrated GEQ on the Mark II C+, but there's also a different power amp scheme where there's only a single pair of 6L6s in a Class A configuration. As a result, I'm gonna use the Class A mode on the Mark III and Mark IV in the clean sounds, but for the other sounds, I'm gonna use what I think to be the intended simul class setting where it combines both class A and class AB power amplifier schemes using a pair of 6L6s in the middle and EL34s on the outer set of tubes. Though in my experience, the class A versus simul class debate has always been more about feel and snappiness or sag or lack thereof with a class A amplifier more than it has to do with you know the actual tonal impact of it. So. I don't think that if I uh, didn't tell you about it, you would even realize there was a set of EL34s in these amplifiers that is absent from the 2C+. Finally, onto the preamp then, you'll notice the Mark 2C Plus and Mark 3 look virtually identical from the front, with the Mark 3 simply being more busy in the pull functionality. In fact, every one of these tone pots have push-pull functions on them, which cannot be said for the 2C Plus nor the Mark 4. And the Mark IV looks a little more streamlined and you know separated EQ controls, but for the most part, a lot of the same functionality is present on the clean channel. So starting with the clean channel, it is rather straightforward. That means we can ignore these lead drive and lead master controls. We have the option to turn on EQ. I don't feel it's necessary on the clean channel. You might gives you another round of EQ if you would like it, but um, the Mesa Boogie Mark series does behave a little more like a traditional clean Fender amp would in the clean mode, so I don't think it really is needed. All three amps share a master volume control for the lead, a bass middle treble, and a gain control with full bright functionality on the gain control for more high frequency content. And the two and three have these pull shift controls on bass and treble, but we're gonna ignore that for now because the Mark IV does not have that, and I feel like the high gain channels are a better representation of what these do and the benefits that they can have in the clean channel. I think they sound a little honky and congested when you pull treble and pull bass on the clean. Some people might like it, might sound better with their cabinets. Um, but for now, let's just treat this as kind of a simple blackface fender, and I think you'll find there's not that much difference between all the amps. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
can certainly tell these amplifiers are related, huh? The 2C Plus and 3 were so close in the cleanest section there that I think a couple tweaks to the EQ controls would have brought them to be damn near identical, even more so than they were. And I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference if you flip between the two amps in a live situation. The Mark IV is a little brighter, a little grittier, at least at the same volume. And that is one thing I found to be true across all channels in these amplifiers, depending on the simulclass or class A configuration or, you know, how hard maybe the preamp is hitting the power amp. There is a little more grit and bite, both in terms of preamp gain structure and I think with how hard it is hitting the power tubes on the Mark IV. But I think once again, you probably could have made a couple more tweaks and get it even closer than I did. Um, for the cleanliest of cleans, I do prefer the two and three sounds, but the four is absolutely fantastic in its own right. Probably could have pushed in the bright switch and got rid of some of that as well. For the cranked clean sound where we're getting a lot of power amp distortion and hitting it hard, the differences start to become a little more apparent when we get to the volume roll off behavior and the harmonics that are present when the guitar volume is all the way back up. The gain, so to speak, the distortion level, isn't really all that different across all the amps once they're wide open. I think they all sound fantastic with that, you know, cranked black face or basement style sound, but they are just a, a tad different with, I think, the 2C Plus being a little smoother and having a little fizz in the high end to cut through, and the Mark IV is still a personal favorite of mine. I would definitely take the three. They all are pretty much interchangeable in terms of their use. They're close enough to the point that, again, I can't rule them out in terms of being, well, this amplifier does this all the time, you know, so I think they're all, you know, well within the same respectable grounds of a good tone. Things become a little more difficult when we start talking about the Rhythm 2 channel, primarily because the 2C Plus simply doesn't have one. On the Mark III, you pull the middle control to access this channel, and there's a dedicated R2 on the Mesa Boogie Mark IV. And this is essentially kind of an overlapping channel. It Start somewhere in the middle of the clean channel in terms of cleanliness. It does a lot of that overdriven crank stuff we did earlier, uh, but it also overlaps with some of the lower gain tones on the lead channel, which makes it not that big of a bummer to not have on the 2C Plus. As you'll see, I can dial in a pretty convincing Rhythm 2 sound on the lead channel of the 2C Plus. I find the Rhythm 2 to be more useful as a live tool where, you know, here in the studio, I can just flip-flop between different EQ settings and it's no big deal. But, you know, for an amplifier like the Mark II, you basically have two channels to work with and, and that's it. Whereas the Mark III, you have three individual modes, especially on the Mark IV with its individual EQ controls across all the channels, sans the uh, bass and middle control on rhythm one and two, those are shared. You get a, a much more variety and you're not having to sacrifice, you know, say the treble in one channel because it's too bright, but then it's too dull on the other channel. You get a lot more choice and variation across those. So that in itself is one big drawback to the older amplifiers where you only have one EQ and kind of one gain control. But that is all ultimately to say that a lot of the Rhythm 2 sounds that lie within these amplifiers are also within Rhythm 1 and lead. There is a slightly different texture to it. I'm assuming there's some different gain staging going on but for the most part, you can cop a lot of those same tones. Again, in my personal experience using a pedal board, I like Rhythm 2 just to have that extra bit of natural tube push. It's not really a deal breaker for me. I would have much preferred to have like the Channel 2 in the Mark V, for instance. <laughs>
And now for the crown jewel of the Mesa Boogie Mark series family, the lead channel, which is accessed by pulling the lead drive pot on the Mark II C Plus and Mark III, or switching via the switch on the back on the Mark IV to its lead position. The similarities between Rhythm 1 and 2 start to fall apart a little bit when we get into the lead channel. You can certainly make them all sound similar, but there's a lot of evolution between especially the 3 and the 4 that uh, makes them stand out a bit more. And this is where I'm going to start using the integrated graphic EQ up until this point. I feel like Rhythm 1 and 2 are sort of a vintage style affair where I don't need another pass. It is helpful if you're trying to say, for instance, like with the Mark IV, match the overall output EQ uh, from one amplifier to another. But when it comes to the bass tonal quality, it's still good, even if it's off. For the lead channel though, this is where the strange tone stack behavior starts to creep in and you absolutely need another pass of EQ. So you might've noticed in the cranked clean section and even perhaps in the one after that, that these EQ controls are sort of like a pedal control in the sense that they affect the distortion quality because they are pre-distortion for the most part. They sit in kind of a weird spot in all the gain stages to where if you turn up treble, you actually turn up gain a little bit and the sound gets less flubby because you're pushing more high frequency content into the distortion, just like you would if you turn up the tone control of a tube screamer. Likewise, turning down bass tightens up your guitar tone. The mids control kind of adds this overarching body to the guitar sound. It doesn't really get any higher gain or really fundamentally different, but it does add something there, I feel like, in the low mids to the fatness of guitar sound, where mids at zero is your more traditional Hetfield affair. And then as you turn it up to about six, seven, eight, uh, that's where the Petrucci rock tone is, in my opinion. So I kind of go between those two, oftentimes leaving it dead in the middle for my own material on the Mark IV. So you'll likely notice as we go through this timeline, if you will, of high gain guitar tones, I tend to gradually turn up the treble, gradually turn down the bass, you know, turn up the both the preamp volume and the lead drive controls to add that much more distortion. And then the graphic EQ to affect the actual output frequency response, I tend to scoop the mids even more and more. You attain that iconic five band mid scoop V shape that a lot of uh, Mesa Boogie Mark series users have. So all that combined, especially once you get into all the pull shift functionality, it's understandable why some people's heads spin when they look at these amplifiers. But I feel like once you get into the, the mindset of working with this amp, it becomes really straightforward and it allows you to dial in so many more tones than you could on you know a traditional even most other mesa boogie amps but especially something that uh, is vintage inspired you know it cannot do this range of sounds that i'm about to show you here <laughs> we
Now this is about where the similarities end across the 2C Plus 3 and 4. They all got this weird two-stage drive control thing. They've got the pre-distortion EQ and then post-distortion graphic EQ. But the 2C Plus and 3 definitely share more on the lead channel than it shares with the Mark IV. So talking about the 2C Plus and the Mark III specifically, this shares, once again, all of the EQ controls across the clean channel and the lead channel, and in the case of the three, the Rhythm 2 as well. But what this also does is cascades all of that into the controls of the lead channel. So the volume control affects both the clean channel and the lead channel, oddly enough. What's even stranger, though, is the master volume control affects the lead master volume control but the lead master volume control doesn't affect the clean one. So what essentially you do to make this amplifier usable is dial in your clean sound, get it as loud as you want, and then gradually bring up your lead sound to match the volume or slightly exceed it, depending on what you're trying to do, of your clean tone. It's kind of bonkers. And sort of the same thing with the lead drive, where this is an additional kind of gain stage um, in the lead section. Now, this functionality is shared on the Mark IV, but the Mark IV has its own independent gain controls that's not shared with Rhythm 1 and 2. However, the Mark IV only has a single master volume control, and essentially, it does the same thing, right? Volume is volume, but anecdotally speaking, and I can't tell you this with scientific fact, but to me, it seems like there is a difference between hitting the lead master harder with the regular master turned up high than vice versa. It's as if you can get more compression out of the preamp with a high clean master volume on the lead channel than if you did it the other way around at the same volume. This probably sounds like I'm batshit crazy, <laughs> and I know I'm repeating a lot of the same words because there's a lot going on on these amplifiers, but uh, I'm not going to try to showcase that element of the amps because, again, I might be uh, hearing things that simply aren't there, but nonetheless, I feel like if you stick to the intended philosophy of dialing in the master volume on the clean, finish it off on the lead channel, you'll be in a good spot at the end. And of course, it's really easy on the Mark IV. You've got individual volume controls for every channel. Now, if that didn't make your head spin enough, we'll start talking about the pull shift functionality on all these amplifiers. And across the two, three, and four, there's only really one thing that is shared both in name and function, and that is the pull bright control on the lead master. Now, this isn't your typical bright control like on the clean channel, that's shared across all the amplifiers is actually kind of a saturation control for the preamp. You can sort of think of it as a Jose mod for a Marshall where it clips a lot of the high frequency content and you get more distortion post distortion, kind of hard thing to think about. But this one I think adds a capacitor somewhere in uh, parallel that clips some of the high frequency content and it just sounds more saturated that way. So this is the same function across all the amps, but that's about where it ends because you see where the 3 and 2 share the volume control on all the channels. It also shares the pull bright control on the lead channel, which acts like any other bright control would on a 6505 or a you know dual rectifier or a hot rodded Marshall. But this control is absent from the Mark IV, so you don't have that option. In addition to that, there's these pull shift controls on treble and bass that shift the frequencies that those controls are affecting. So the treble kind of gets a little more squashy little uh, honkier and more in the high mids than it does uh, extreme treble frequencies, in, at least in terms of guitar frequencies. And the bass, I feel like, moves up a little more towards the low mids. So whereas they probably start out here, they come a little closer and they may be more effective guitar frequencies, but especially for the higher gain side of things, I tend to not prefer the bass shift. You might have better luck with that on the rhythm sound. The pull shift on treble, though, can be extremely powerful and is one of my favorite things for the Metallica-style sound. The closest thing that exists here on the Mark IV is the pull fat control, which does something similar to pull shift on treble, but to me, it's not exactly the same thing. It kind of sounds like it's adding a bit of a tube screamery hump up front, and perhaps it is simply a tone stack shift, but I think for, again, that classic Metallica sound, I prefer the implementation of the Mesa Boogie Mark III and the 2C Plus. Once I heard this, I kind of missed it on my Mark IV, to be honest. In addition to that, one other thing that the 3 and 2 have over the 4 is this pull deep control on the master volume. Again, this affects all the channels, but I think it's most prominent in the lead mode. This is something that I cannot replicate on the 4. 
um, adding a little bit more graphic EQ bump to 80 and 240 hertz gets it close, but there is something fundamentally different about that that I think has more to do with the power amp than it does with the preamp. So uh, again, this is something that uh, has a leg up over the newer models. The closest approximation to this that I can find on the Mark IV is the presence pull shift, which apparently brings it more in line with the 2C Plus and Mark III presence frequency, but it's definitely not a replacement for pull deep. Speaking of presence, by the way, I also kept the presence controls on the Mark III and Mark II C Plus around three or four across all these demos since they're located on the back. And I feel like I really didn't need to make any adjustments given the graphic EQ options and it gets a little out of hand pretty quickly. Uh, I think the pot uh, tapering could have been a little improved on that control, but perhaps you might find some use in the more extreme settings. Another way to supposedly bring the Mark IV more in line with the 2C Plus is by using the mid-gain rocker switch on the back to sacrifice some of the higher-end harmonics for more saturation and crunch, though it doesn't really make up for the difference in tonality, in my opinion. It does add more gain at the same levels, which does bring it closer to the Mark II C Plus in that sense, but there is, at least when it comes to vintage sounds especially, and that fabled Metallica and images and words tones, there's something in the 2C Plus and the 3 that the 4 cannot do. In short, I found the Mark IV to be a much more high fidelity, modern focused, almost brittle sounding distortion quality if you push it too far compared to the almost too easy to get a good sound out of Mark III and 2C Plus. That mid focused growl combined with a scoop at 750 is just magical. Now, I love them both for different purposes. I do still prefer the Mark IV for the lower gain side of things, at least the music that I write, and I really like the 3 and the 2C Plus for more vintage sounds, though it can absolutely keep up with any down-tuned type of material. They are simply different beasts, and I don't think there's much of a point in trying to make them sound identical. If anything, this does make me want a Mark III Red Stripe because I feel like it is the best of both worlds, but, you know, in the meantime, I love my Mark IV. <laughs>
So we've heard some tones. I've babbled on. I've nerded out for probably far too long. Thank you so much for sticking with me this far. If you have, what's there left to say? I mean, probably not a whole lot other than uh, they're all amazing. I wish I owned one of each. I wish I owned every stripe revision and every uh, year of every model that uh, these different amplifiers have, but my savings account is not infinite. So if I had to choose one, I'm glad I chose the Mark IV because I was initially looking for a Mark III, a red stripe at that, and the Mark IV popped up at a price that I thought I would kick myself if I didn't get it, and uh, well, I'm, I'm not kicking myself. It is a fantastic amp, and I do plan to use it going further for my own musical endeavors. I think it does fit with that sound. With that said, though, holy shit, is this amplifier incredible. I mean, the 2C Plus is obviously the, the gold standard for a lot of people, but the Red Stripe, I mean, it, it nails it perfectly as far as I'm concerned. Then you get the pull rhythm functionality and all that. For different material, mm, I might have to look this amplifier up again. Uh, this amp in particular came with a, a vertical 2x12 matching, you know, white Mesa Boogie cabinet that would look fantastic, but I simply don't have the room for it, nor is it different enough to really justify a purchase. So I'm very glad and very grateful I got to spend some time with these amps, and the Mesa Boogie Mark series will always hold a very special place in my guitar player's heart. With that, thank you so very much for watching. And please leave any questions and comments down below. Let me know if you want to see more of the Mark III. I feel like the upcoming content uh, for the 2C Plus on the Gearland will cover a lot of the Mark III, and it'll be a little redundant if I did. But maybe you still want to see some. Let me know before uh, I have to give it back. And uh, with that, we will see you next time. Bye.